Hey guys, it's Vaughn and welcome back to another episode of Housework. And in today's episode, we are working this backyard, honey. <laughs> I'm so excited. I just grabbed my camera really, really quick. This episode is gonna be more of like vlog style with a mixture of some voiceover stuff, so please bear with me. And I'm so excited because this landscaping project is kind of my brainchild. I kind of conceptualized it myself and ran it by our landscaper and he told me basically what we could and could not do from the selection of the bricks to the flowers that are going in, to the actual shape of the mulch beds, the color of the mulch, everything. So I'm excited to see how it all comes together. If you guys hear music in the back, that's because Anne is having a lunch slash video moment as usual. But yeah, like I said, Eduardo just pulled up, so we are gonna be getting started and I'm gonna be taking you guys along, so come on. As you guys can imagine, this process took several days. This is just day one where my landscaper came by and delivered these evergreen trees that we're gonna be planting into the landscaping. As you guys know, I love evergreen I just have a thing for it. It just makes any outdoor space look more elegant. So we decided to go with this Aborvite species. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Frankly, any evergreen would have worked for us, but I wanted to just make sure we took note of the species so that they could all be the same and be consistent. So over in this area, we're just removing those bricks. I don't know if you guys remember what this little flower bed looked like, but it was here before we moved into this house and it was very poorly done. You could see the cement, which was binding the bricks. It was very sloppy and just really tiny. You couldn't really fit much into it. So we decided to go ahead and open that up a bit. Here you just see a mechanism for carving out the area which we want to create landscaping for. So it's just kind of this rope thing and these metal stakes and that just kind of sets the line so we can kind of just see where it's going as far as measurements. And just a guide for the landscapers um, so when they go and remove the grass they know exactly where. And then right here I wanted to just note that we wanted to keep this space free and open open for about three feet just so that we could get a lawnmower through there for back here I mean I obviously want to love the outcome but I also don't want to make more work for myself so with the planning of all of this we had to consider a few different things and definitely the space between that playground area and the patio landscaping was super important here you just see one of our guys just kind of removing that grass they used a machine when they removed the grass for the playground area so I guess this space was too small for that so they're just kind of doing it with the shovel and the grass removal took quite a while right and also just the leveling of the ground because once the grass came up we had to then make it even with the um, existing flower bed or whatever you want to call it because there's that kind of hump there where you can tell the leveling is a little bit off so they had to take some time to kind of add some dirt take some dirt away just to make sure that that area there was completely level once all the grass was cut it was time to um, prep the ground for planting plants <laughs> so those trees and those flowers that we chose it's almost time for those to go in uh, we also wanted to transplant some plants because the way that the plants were arranged and situated over by the windows we discovered over time that we really didn't care for the layout so we wanted to just kind of move those roses of Sharon bushes off to the side a bit so that they can kind of be centered in the window giving a really nice view from the inside of the house and we also wanted to center those evergreens in between those so there was some resituating that needed to be done and that's what we're doing here once the plant configuration was all finalized it was time for the bricks so they arrived looking so good we decided to go with this kind of earth tone dirt colored brick because it looks really natural and I love the kind of shape of them I think these are called bullet bricks because they interlock into one another kind of like Legos and it makes them really sturdy especially if you have children or pets and they have a tendency to look really nice and clean when they all kind of come together in a row Good morning it's the next day we're still at it with the landscaping they worked really hard on it yesterday and then called it a night when it started getting really dark and now they're back this morning I came home from my run and I saw that they were already here picking up where they left off you guys is looking really Really good you know it's looking good when your landscaper is snapchatting himself doing the work so you know it's got to look good when they are showing it off to their peers I'm gonna give you guys some updates so right quick because they are using some power tools and there's a lot going on this morning so let's go take a look so yeah, hon, I went outside. I'm like, what is this noise? So Eduardo was actually cutting one of the bricks down to make the edge really precise for a particular area where it kind of met the concrete. So I love that it actually came out looking really clean. So today is the day that all the plants are officially in and we're putting down the landscape fabric. It has multiple benefits, right? But I think the main one is the weed barrier. Dad came over and he was very impressed with the precision and straight lines of the landscaping job. There's that area where that brick was, where I told you guys they cut it 
it very straight so it looked good going up against that concrete turned out really nice and here we are just seeing some of the leveling that is happening just to make sure that the ground is all even at this point things are starting to come together very nicely we can kind of see visually what this is going to look like so I was pretty happy in this moment right here <laughs> and as with any project with this house right it's always a good day when my dad approves the work and later on this same day we see the landscape fabric going down pretty much they just cut this thing to fit and reinforce it with some metal stakes there are some areas where you may see a little more metal stakes than others just for reinforcement but for the most part they just surround the plants with it so the weeds can't get through after the mulch went down, the job is pretty much finished. I was advised by my landscaper to begin watering all of the plants as soon as possible and to continue doing that until the roots take. This is the best chance of them surviving the season, especially the ones that were uprooted and relocated. They are at higher risk of not making it through the season. This is actually the part that's most stressful for me. <laughs> my mom was laughing at me because I was like, I don't want any of them to die. But at the end of the day, we bought all affordable plants. So if some of them or whatever don't make it, we'll just replace them, not a big deal. And you guys will kind of see later the issues that we're having with one of these evergreens. So keep watching. And y'all know me with these solar lights, okay? I went to Menards and got this four pack. These are really good though. It's got quite a few lumens, so they're pretty bright. I'm just gonna pop some of these down into the mulch just to add some nice ambient lighting. So I am using a hammer so I can get this stake through that really thick um, landscaping fabric. It's super thick, you guys. So. Once I get that stake down in there, I can just go ahead and pop that light right on top. I went with this kind of bronze colored solar light fixture, but I think I could have also gotten away with doing a black one. So there are definitely some options with complementing this brown mulch. Now, as we prepare to take a glimpse at the finished product, let's be reminded of the before, all right? Let's remember for a moment how empty this yard was really looking. Even with the patio furniture additions, there was still something missing. And I think we nailed it with this landscaping. What do you guys think? It's obviously not perfect, right? But it is perfect for us. I think I just really wanted a cozy kind of border around the patio to kind of define the space a little bit more, but also space and an excuse to house more plants. So let's start with the view coming down out of my back door onto this stoop. I added some lanterns back here, which I love so much when they're lit and then some little fake topiary uh, plants there. Now, I wanna remind you guys what this little flower bit looked like before, all right? You see those bricks, you see there's no mulch, there's just kind of weeds everywhere. Here we have doubled the size of the flower bed, making it conducive for a small tree and some shrubs. We separated and spread out those daylilies so that we could have more of them. And we relocated those Roses of Sharon for some nice symmetry, as well as a great view from inside the house, as well as from the patio. It's kind of the end of the blooming season for those Roses of Sharon, so they may not come back until next year, but they are perennials, as with all of the plants that we chose for this landscaping job. So we're not too, too worried about the flowers. We are, however, worried about that one evergreen tree right off of the patio that one is doing pretty poorly right now we're going to try some different life-saving measures on this thing but if it continues to die we will be replacing it a few other tweaks to the existing patio i relocated the fire pit you guys and i'm so excited about its new home it's right here in the center of the mulch area that we left empty i'm considering putting this thing on top of a paver or concrete block but that will come once i am 100 sure that the fire pit will stay here and you guys will notice that i'm incorporating a lot of solar lights and lanterns into the land landscaping itself I absolutely adore that I just think it's a great way to make your landscaping a little more interactive kind of make it work for you a little bit more it also absolutely complements the flowers especially at night and with all these plants they're going to get bigger right these shrubs are going to grow to about two feet tall the trees are not going to exceed maybe six and a half seven feet and all of the flowers that you guys see are perennials like I mentioned so they are going to multiply every year and get a lot bigger and take up a lot more space so that's why we have them pretty spread out because of the new landscaping I feel like I'm able to spread my furniture area out a little bit more and get a lot more space out of the deal because I don't feel like you know I'm losing that cozy vibe because it's been redefined at this point so now the cozy parameters if you will have extended far beyond the pergola posts and now exist all the way to the edge of that concrete and I don't know if you all remember my patio reveal video from last year I will link it for you if you haven't seen it to get yourself all caught up but you may recall those little stools underneath that table I was able to actually pull one out now because I have more space and use it as an ottoman for my chair which I love so, so much. So now that you all have seen the daytime look, it's time for the best part, which is how this thing looks at night. 
my patio kind of nighttime routine actually gets started sometime around six when I start kind of lighting my candles and my torches and my fire pit wood. And it's just so cool how the scenery and everything changes so much as we get deeper into the night. And I personally enjoy it at every phase. I love being able to sit out here with my beer or my snack and just really enjoy the crackle of the fire and just watch my daughter play and just look at the trees and the flowers. It's such a vibe. This is kind of our dusk moment. And as we get further into the night, it gets a lot darker, obviously, and it gets so much more cozy. The solar lights start coming on as it picks up on the darkness, just kind of one by one, they just start picking up on that. And it's so nice to have those just automatically cut on and not have to manually control that. And it's just enough lighting, very subtle and calming. I really love how the light reflects off the side of the house and leaves little patterns onto the mulch. And that's a really nice bonus for setting the mood back here. And you see my sister, Alex, she's having a blast playing with Sansa. Both the dogs and the humans love it back here. So I'm really excited about a lot of the upgrades that we made to this backyard. You guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you haven't already, definitely check out my housework series. There is so much more to come as we are always working on this house. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will talk to you in my next one. Bye. Or better yet, good night.